We are delighted to have theatre and opera director Tom Creed join us again. Tom is a steering committee member of the NCFA and was a guest on our very first show. Since that time, only a matter of weeks ago, the NCFA have put together a 13-point recovery plan in order to make sure the arts not only survive, but thrive over the coming months and years. Today, we will speak to Tom about this recovery plan, as well as the recently published programme for government and its plan for the arts sector. Hello, Tom. How are you keeping? I'm well, thank you. Um, yeah, it was a big week last week, so it's a... Uh... It's slightly calmer, um, I think, getting to draw a breath um, and uh, spend some time on things that aren't NCFA uh, for the moment. But things are well. I think we're really encouraged by the news uh, last week um, and we have a lot more to do. Yes. But um, I think it's a good start. Yeah, I was going to just uh, say that it seems the NCFA's efforts have paid off already as the Arts Council have received an additional 20 million euro for the government. And that was actually the first point on the recovery plan. Uh, can you talk us through the reasoning behind that figure and whether you see this as, as a victory or is it just the first obstacle cleared? Yeah, so the, the figure of 20 million um, came from the Arts Council surveying the sector. So that's an accurate picture of the actual losses to artists and arts workers and arts organisations in 2020 uh, during the pandemic. So real losses so far and then losses that are projected based on all the activities that have been cancelled. So, um, yeah, it's really encouraging that the, um, the, the sector came together um, and, you know, I, I speak for the steering committee of the um, NCFA, but also all of the artists and arts workers and arts organisations and allies around the country who took time to share materials on social media, to contact politicians and to let them know that the arts matter and that the arts is a sector um, with economic impact, which is crucial to our identity and our well-being. Um, and it's really encouraging that uh, that government listened um, and responded um, yeah, with this, uh, this sum of money, which will enable the sector to stabilise itself uh, for until the end of the year and give us time to, um, I guess, to plan and to achieve the other things on the NCFA plan. So, you know, it's a really, um, a really encouraging sign of what can happen when uh, the sector comes together and works together. Um, but of course, it is only one of uh, 13 points in the NCFA plan to government. Um, and, you know, we understand that uh, the next few points are being worked on, but that there are a lot more things uh, to do so that the sector can not only survive, but as you said, thrive um, and you know, uh, continue to make work and engage with the public uh, in these changed times. So, yes, it's a, it's um, encouraging to see the government's response um, to the NCFA's uh, proposal. Um, they recently published their draft programme for government. And how does that address the NCFA's 13 point plan? Where does it fall short and where has it succeeded? So, um, the I guess when we saw the program for government initially, um, it seemed a little vague. Um, you know, it had uh, I guess an aspiration to support the arts, which is good. Um, but you know, compared to other sectors where there were very clear um, timelines and sums of money uh, indicated in terms of other sectors, I guess um, I think a lot of artists and arts workers and arts organisations were a little disappointed. But um, we're assured that. Um, it's actually the most detailed programme for government in terms of the arts uh, to date, that usually the arts just weren't a line or two. Um, so, you know, I mean, uh, there are things that I think, um, you know, we will hope will be answered. There's no mention of Culture Ireland, for example, in the programme for government. And, you know, given the emphasis in the programme for government for Ireland's reputation abroad, you know, it's vital that Culture Ireland is funded as part of that. And I guess, yes. you know, when when the um when the new government is in place if the new government comes together um and when there's a new minister for culture i guess you know what we're really looking for is a roadmap you know we've uh, we heard from the last government that they would double investment in the arts in five years um and we're behind on that um obviously you know the world has changed um but we want to see a roadmap from government for how investment in the arts will be maintained and increased. That's the crucial thing. Um, and then, 
I guess there are other um, things which you know are part of our 13th point plan around tax reform, uh, reform VAT on uh, culture, um, tax incentives for uh, investment, uh, private investment or donations um, to the arts. Um, insurance really needs to be sorted out, um, and you know the uh, the culture is really um, suffering because of uh, you know an insurance system that's not fit for purpose. Um, so yeah, there's there's much more to be done, and you know the Arts Council in their um, advisory expert advisory group report uh, last week, they indicated that uh, 30 million euro would be necessary uh, for next year. To allow the recovery and stabilization to continue so you know all of those things are things that that we need to hear soon from a new government once they're in place yes absolutely you uh, just mentioned culture 2025 there tom and um, obviously that was published in january before covid 19 the pandemic uh, hit ireland and the arts sector uh, do you feel that now that policy, we have to go back to the drawing board a bit on that and um, obviously reassess what culture 2025 um, needs, what needs to be changed. Um, I mean, the answer in terms of culture 2025, we don't really know what's happening with that. I think um, it's important that the incoming government has a strong cultural policy. Um, and you know, two of the three parties com committed to doubling uh, investment in the arts uh, before the election. So uh, you know, we hope that uh, despite the change times, um, that they will try and stick to that. Um, you know, and to uh, I think to look at things like uh, Dr. Gabriel Scali's end note in the Arts Council's report, where he talked about the the intrinsic value of the arts and the value of the arts in terms of well being, uh, in terms of the economic impact of the arts. Uh, you know, and the fact that there, uh, you know, there is a sector with tens and thousands of workers who are workers and who will contribute to the rebuilding of the country. So, um, you know, we need, a, um, you know, a hope that, um, that, you know, many of the initiatives in Culture 2025, in terms of the capital investment, in terms of the commitment to doubling funding that we've heard from the various parties, will continue. Um, and of course, things may need to change based on uh, this the change reality, but um, you know the investment in culture is very small com uh, in the broader scheme of things. Um, and, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and we hope you know, it, it, and it's really important that that's maintained. Yes. Absolutely, you're you're right there. Um, and as you mentioned in your last interview with Stage Door, there were many workers who actually fell through the gaps of both the COVID nineteen payments and the Arts Council bursaries. Uh, the Epic Working Group has been working tirelessly to represent the interests and concerns of the individuals and businesses involved in producing live events and performance. As they quoted recently, we need to protect these skills. Otherwise, when it's time to turn the lights back on, there'll be nobody there to do it. Uh, Tom, what, in your opinion, needs to be done by the government and arts organisations to assure that these workers who are so crucial to the arts sector are looked after and can continue to grow and develop their skills? I mean, what's crucial is that the um, the two, uh, I guess, social protection schemes, the, uh, the pandemic employment payment, which is for individual workers, and the COVID wage subsidy scheme, which is for organisations, um, need to be maintained until the arts sector can be back to full capacity. Um, it's not enough to say, um, you know, we're letting the theatres open in J June or July, um, because actually it's not going to be possible for things to get back to full capacity. Um, essentially, a whole year of artistic work has, you know, uh, up to, while well, it's great to see that the Fringe and the Dublin Theatre Festival will, um, you know, do a reduced programme, uh, events all the way through to Wexford Festival Opera in, uh, in November, have cancelled the bulk of their activity um, and the bulk of their revenue generating activity. Yeah. So, well, it um, must be very we, hard to put on a show, if, you know, if there's only 15% of the audience allowed to attend, um, that surely sure. is yeah absolutely you know, so, impossible yeah the first thing from government i think is that it's vital that those payments are maintained until the sector is back to capacity um and you know i know other sectors are going to be looking for the same thing um and i think uh the, you know at the same time the investment in the arts council will allow the arts council to roll out 
a, a range of other supports in terms of bursaries and professional development uh, opportunities for people to upskill or reskill um, so that the, the sector can be ready for this changed reality. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's vital, you know, and I, I, I know that's being worked on, so I hope we'll have an answer to that soon. Um, and similarly, you know, it's also vital that, uh, that art centres and venues are safe to work in, in terms of welcoming in audiences and also for the, the artists and the staff to create the work. So, you know, we need capital investment uh, for art centres and other venues to become COVID ready in terms of the, the various physical things that need to be done to the buildings. So, you know, those two things um, from government and then the Arts Council rolling out the schemes that they now have the money to do are the next most urgent things on the agenda. Okay. Yes, that makes sense. I, I think everybody will be ready for a bit of escapism, Tom, when all of this is uh, over. Um, yeah, to get back into those theatres and to see the shows, and as you say. Um, okay, so as you said, uh, in, in the NCFA's plan, uh, there's uh, point five, particularly focuses on a full minister for culture in the new government. With a shift in government position imminent, what would you like to see from the new Minister for Culture, assuming this point is achieved and they can concentrate solely on the arts as opposed to dividing it between the Gaeltacht and heritage as has been done before? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we'll see how the department is divided up. Um, you know, we're hearing of various possibilities like the arts might end up in with sport or tourism, uh, you know, um, which, you know, while it would be good to have um, uh, I mean, you know, a, a dedicated minister. It, you know, it might also not be a terrible idea to have uh, a minister in a strong, well-funded department. Um, you know, representing other sectors. Uh, you know, it actually it might increase the status of the department. You know, who knows? Um, I guess we'll know soon. Um, but uh, you know, I think what's crucial is that the uh, from government is that the state agencies that are there. Um, to support uh, and invest in culture. The Arts Council for uh, the work that happens here in Ireland and Culture Ireland for the work that happens abroad are left to do what they do. Like the Arts Council, you know, they invest in these organisations to have expertise and to have structures in terms of giving out funding. And I think, um, the you know, it's vital that, that any increased investment goes into the Arts Council and Culture Ireland rather than into other initiatives where um, that the department is setting up, you know, with uh, restrictive criteria or with specific agendas behind them. Um, the, you know, artists and arts workers and arts organizations are very industrious and they're making work that responds, in, you know, directly to what's going on. So let them do that um, and, uh, you know, invest in the Arts Council and Culture Ireland who are there uh, to support this work um, and make the, uh, any increased investment as broadly accessible as possible um, without uh, targeting it in specific areas so that the uh, the sector can draw on this investment as they need it. Yes, absolutely. Um, I suppose there has been in the past a lot of red tape when you are applying for funding um, and, you, you know, certain angles that artists have to take in order to put on work. So I think that's a smart a smart uh, deduction there um so tom yeah. oh sorry go ahead yeah i was just going to say also you know i think in terms of those agencies it's important um that you know our, organ our particularly arts organizations have had to do so much work in terms of like reporting and rebudgeting and re-reporting all of their activity this year and i think it's also important that the application um, processes are streamlined and made more straightforward. Um, there's a welcome commitment in the Expert Advisory Group report that the Arts Council might look to support uh, uh, people who might not previously have received Arts Council funding um, because of the needs of the sector right now. You know, I hope that will continue. Um, but also that particularly in terms of um, uh, strategic funding and arts centre funding and the various funding schemes for next year, that, um, that it can be as user-friendly and as streamlined as possible. Uh, so that uh, people don't have, don't have to do all of that work again and again and again and again. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, so, Tom, just about yourself now, uh, what about your own work? What's next for you? Um, are What's you going to continue with your uh, Samuel Beckett produc production of what? Will that be coming back? 
I hope so. Um, you know, it's got one person in it, so it's, uh, it, it, you know, Beckett is kind of the original social distancing. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, hopefully, um, you know, we had been uh, trying to plan a tour, uh, which obviously has been disrupted by this, so I hope that will happen. Um, we were in the middle of performing it uh, in Cork when the, uh, the lockdown happened. Um, we had to cancel the last performance and a week of shows in New Zealand. So, you know, I hope there'll be more Irish dates and more international dates. Um, I'm working on a project uh, in the summer with Dublin Youth Theatre, um, which uh, was going to be a show in a theatre, but we've decided to make online. Um, so that will be coming down okay. the tracks in the next couple of months. Um, and then there are some things which have been postponed. Um, and the you know but there's a lot of actually a lot of things in planning and development particularly for the second half of next year where i hope um the uh you know that we've adjusted to um i'm not sure about this term the new normal i don't think the old normal was ideal and um, what we need is a better normal um and uh the, so that you know by the time we get uh you know to this time next year we'll have a clearer sense of what the better normal will be um and yeah so then there are some theatre projects and opera projects, uh, some new plays and new operas coming down the tracks. Um, I'm also um, thinking about uh, actually going back to college for a year um, to take oh, advantage. Fantastic. Of, yeah, to take advantage of this interval um, to kind of do something that I haven't had the chance to do in 20, almost 20 years. So, um, you know, if that happens, uh, I'll be able to let people know about it. But I hope, you know, it's, it's also, it's a good opportunity to, um, to take stock a little bit you know i sort of feel sometimes when i've been walking around um uh i kind of felt a little bit like i did 20 years ago where kind of i wasn't quite sure what was going to happen um and was kind of uh broken apprehensive but uh also that you know that there were all kinds of possibilities and i think that going forward um we can find new ways of doing what we do and find new things to do um uh you know which could be some of the positive things that come out of this uh these strange days um that a better normal in terms of like a the the, the world that we're in and the sector that we're in and also our individual practices as artists and arts workers um Absolutely. so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm apprehensive but uh, but look forward to all the things that i hope will happen well, that sounds very exciting, Tom. And to be honest with you, I think you'll have to coin that uh, expression, the better normal, because it's uh, it's wonderfully catchy and I hope it takes off. People that have been following you on social media have been seeing that you're posting your walks. Can you talk us through a little bit about that? Yeah, I guess. Um, like, so I live in um, uh, in Dublin 8 near the canal and I... Um, I guess I've been getting out originally within the two kilometre limit and then slightly further um, in the evening. Um, and I guess it's just sort of become a kind of a ritual um, that uh, that every evening I would take a photograph of something um, and of no, always no people, because um, uh, mostly there were no people, uh, particularly in the first months. Um, and, you know, I think it started, I, I, I took a walk um, right at the beginning through Temple Bar um, and like walked uh, through Temple Bar Square and down Essex Street past the Project Arts Centre and down Cars Lane and there was literally nobody. I saw absolutely nobody um, and, you know, took some photographs of that. And then I, yeah, I just sort of, I kind of got into it as a habit, I guess, as a kind of ritual, um, as a kind of document. Um, and then I guess two months have into the lockdown. Discovered, have you discovered and noticed things that you perhaps wouldn't have done pre-COVID? Yeah, I guess, you know, just kind of the way the light falls or, um, you know, particular corners of Portobello or things along the canal. Um, animals also, you know, like there's a, um, I took a photo a few weeks ago of a fox uh, running up the steps at Charlemont Lewis. Um, and this particular yeah. fox, this particular fox has been hanging out kind of in, in the sort of Portobello Charlemont area, um, you know, getting very, very, very close to humans and their dogs. You kind of don't know, uh, you know, that the animals have got very brave, have been enjoying the way the animals have been kind of, uh, um, yeah, kind of taking the city back. Um, and then I guess the, the walk photos uh, have been interrupted over the last month or so with cat photos because a new kitten came to live with us. Um, oh. So the on the outside but also now an animal on the inside um and i do think it's interesting kind of to think about the these strange days you know from the point of view of animals clearly animals are um uh are uh you know think there's something going on as well you know like the 
the animals at home going, why are these humans around all the time? And the animals out there kind of, you know, it, it, they clearly must feel like something has changed also. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I have found myself thinking more and more about animals. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, 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 it reminded me of the story last week um, where the the Liceu uh, Opera House in Barcelona is going to open with a concert for plants. Um, they're going to have plants wow. in each one of the 2000 seats in the auditorium. And so, you know, maybe we can, um, we can start doing some performances for animals also. Um, yeah. we, you know, I don't know how the, how the social distancing, um, you know, if you can have 50 people, but also animals. Laurie Anderson did a concert outside the National Concert Hall for dogs as part of- uh, Oh, fantastic. <laughs> And I think someone at one point did an art exhibition for animals also where like the entrance was very small so only like dogs and things could go in and um, so maybe we can we can we can find some of that through these strange days also fantastic lots of great ideas there um and one very important question for you now tom what's the name of your new cat uh, uh, he's called alfie uh, and he's the best boy in oh. ireland <laughs> brilliant <laughs> well we can't dispute that definitely and i hope you're right i hope we do have a better normal i think the arts you know really has uh, you know really proved itself the art sector at the moment and how hard it has been fighting for justice and you are a big part of that you and the ncfa so thank you very much for your work on that front and we look forward to talking to you again about your work yeah, thanks so much. And thanks also for all of your support in terms of the campaign and getting the word out. And, uh, you know, the more the more people that are talking about the arts, um, uh, people who work in the arts, but also people who appreciate the arts um, and who know how valuable they are, the, the more of a chance we have to ensure that the sector gets the investment that it needs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tom.